It's Mind and Body Monday on the Shalou Show, and Julie Leaf has stopped by our studio from Fit Organics. And today we're going to learn about some food safety because there's been a huge beef recall. It happened this morning on the news. Julie, give us an update. What exactly happened? Okay, so um, a lot of the time when um, we raise livestock, whether it's Canadian, U.S., all around the world, um, there's something that exists in the animal's bodies called E. coli. And E. coli doesn't necessarily contaminate all of the meat. It's only some of the meat. And what happens, especially with beef, is that um, the outside is consistent considered contaminated and the inside no matter what without exception the inside is considered um, not contaminated or sterile so that's why you can have a rare steak Um, you would sear the outside and that will kill the germs on the outside even the E. coli because the E. coli can't stand up to extreme heat and then the inside even if it's raw inside will be considered um, safe because it is uh, it, it hasn't been exposed to the elements and there's no chance of E. coli getting in. Now, what happens, why it's always ground beef that's recalled are a few reasons. Um, ground beef is ground up. And so the inside of the, sur- the outside surfaces come into the inside and the insides to the outside. So it's all mixed up. So that's how the E. coli can get all through that meat. Also, when you cook ground beef, it's hard to tell sometimes whether it's fully cooked. A lot of people think when it's brown, it's fully cooked. Well, if you've ever left it in your fridge for a while, you can see that it goes brown. So you might mistake brown for cooked. Also, the texture is always pretty soft and, and, you know, very, that's why we like ground beef is because it's soft and it's, you know, moist and it, and it tastes really nice most of the time, except when it's full of E. coli. Um, but anyway, um, so it's hard to tell when it's cooked. And so that's what we're going to talk about today, how to make sure that your food is safe and, um, what are some proper temperatures that you wanted, that you want to work with when you're cooking meat. So when it comes to ground beef, so let me ask one question mm-hmm. first before we sure. move on. Yep. With E. coli, now when they say that there's been a huge contamination, now did the E. coli, can it spread? Is that what happens? Uh, yes, it can grow, but it has to be present first. Okay. Yeah, same All with right. salmonella. Salmonella is a um, bacterial pathogen that is usually in um, poultry. And um, what's interesting is that if you have something food tested negative for salmonella, the longer it sits there, the salmonella stays exactly the same. So if your food tests negative for salmonella, then it's going to be negative at one week, five week, or 10 weeks. Um, if not, if it's positive, then it's positive forever. And that's the same with E. coli. We're with Julie Lee from Fit Organics. We are going to make sure your food is healthy and what to do and what to expect when you're cooking ground beef and maybe some chicken. We'll be right back. Go, Che. I'm feeling better on the Pride of Toronto, 103.9 Proud FM, and I'm feeling much better that Julie Lee from Fit Organics is in studio because there's been an issue today about ground beef. Yes. And we got to be prepared and we have to know how to make sure that we're not eating that bad stuff. Exactly. And the best way, hands down, to make sure that all your meat is cooked to the right temperature is a food thermometer. You can get them. They're absolutely dirt cheap. Um, If you break them like I do all the time, then you can replace them quite easily. And um, the best way to tell is the internal temperature of your food. A lot of people think, oh, I cook my chicken for an hour at 375. But what if the chicken was in the back of your fridge and it was a little more frozen than usual, right? It's not going to cook to the same temperature that you need it. So in order to make sure that it's cooked, you want to insert your thermometer in the meats and make sure... (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> Only on Proud <laughs> FM do you insert your thermometer into your meat. <laughs> Make sure you don't hit any bones. This is true. <laughs> it has to be right in the meat. To get the accurate temperature taken to make sure that you stay safe. And Yikes. so how do you know it's all done? <laughs> so There's an um, explosion. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> no. Oh, for heaven's sake. <laughs> Sorry. That's all right. Helen is a um, lesbian. <laughs> Yes, this is grossing her out. (laughs) We're quite excited, but she's grossed out a little bit. A little bit, threw up in her mouth a little bit. So thermometer's number one. Thermometer's number one. Get yourself a meat thermometer. Um, Take the temperature of... Uh, what it is you're going to eat. Um, the other thing, really quick, easy rule of thumb, is that there's a danger zone that that you don't want to store your food at. And you want to make sure that your food stays either below 41 degrees Fahrenheit or hotter than 140 degrees Fahrenheit. So it's 41 and then to the cold end and then reverse it and add a zero, so 140, for the hot end. So that means that um, if you're transporting food from one place to another, you want to make sure that you put it on ice or 
or in a thermal bag to keep it either hot or cold, um, depending on what it is you want to do with that food. Now, a lot of people will say, oh, I'm going to leave this pot of chili out for it to cool because if I put it in the fridge, it will, you know, the core is going to stay at an unsafe temperature. And that's actually a myth. You don't want to ever leave anything out to cool. What you want to do... mm -hmm. What you want to do is you want to spread it out in a bit of a shallow dish or pack your food when you're storing it in the fridge in shallow dishes. That way you're never going to have that core temperature that's going to keep um, the food at an unsafe temperature that's going to make the bacteria grow. So as soon as you're done cooking something, yes. you want to leave it out just for a short period of time and then put it in the fridge right away. You know what? Um, yeah. You don't even really want to leave it out for a okay. short period of time. Right. When you spread it out, so like some of the top hotels, the reason that nobody gets, and this is another myth, people think that you can only get sick from meat. You can actually get very sick um, from a lot of starchy foods like potatoes. Um, they carry botulism and not the good kind that goes in our heads. It's the bad kind. <laughs> and uh, rice actually carries something called called uh, Bacillus cereus, and it's very, it can be deadly in a lot of developing countries, um, and it develops in rice. So uh, what a lot of high-end hotels do is as soon as the rice comes out of their cookers, they spread it really thinly on cold metal sheets thrown in the fridge, and um, that makes sure that it cools very quickly, and nobody gets sick from it. Now, my concern is, though, when they say there's this big equalized scare, Yep. How do you know that your meat's okay from the grocery store to your fridge? Well, um, you want to get it there, you know, as quickly as possible. And also, um, you can buy those thermal bags. You know, the ones with the sort of metal shiny inside and that kind of thing? No, Um, no, no. But what I'm saying is, how do you know that the meat has not been contaminated already? Sometimes it has, but that's where proper cooking comes into play. Okay. Yeah. Um, so if meat is contaminated with E. coli, you can cook it as long as you get it to 160 or above. Okay. Remember the 140 I said? That's only to keep it warm. That's if it's already cooked. So you want to cook all of your ground meats to an internal temperature of 160 plus, and that will ensure that you've cooked all of the harmful or most of the harmful um, bacteria. We are cooking well with Fit Organics, Ms. Julie Leaf, so you live a longer life and you eat healthy. How do they check you out online, girl? You can check me out at www.fitorganics.com. There will be a blog about this issue as well as uh, recipes and other cooking tips. You can follow us at our Twitter handle at fitorganics with an X.com. And, of course, there's Facebook where we post daily food photos. Julie Leaf, Fit Organics, love her guts.